Hey guys, Jack here. A uh, little update on the aquaponic system. Uh, we're in the aviary and I want to talk to you today about some of the things we're doing in here and some of the progress it's been. I mean, let's start out with, I uh, always like a little good news. The first zucchini of the year. And uh, no sign yet of the dreaded squash bug. Squash bugs are a problem, but they're nowhere near as big a problem as the vine borer. And no sign of those guys yet either. I'm hoping in here, under this uh, shade cloth and protected like this, especially with that quarter inch hardware cloth, um, I think it's gonna be kind of hard for a vine borer moth to actually fit through there. I guess folded up wings maybe, but flying, I can't see them getting in here. So we'll see if it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. You know, I'll have zucchini for the first half of the year. And I got tons of it planted in the west pasture, so uh, usually we get some survivors there. We got tomatoes just starting to come on everywhere. And honestly, these should be getting close to picking in a couple weeks at the most because these are cherry tomatoes. And I'm, I'm big on growing cherry tomatoes in Texas, uh, especially in systems like this. You get a much quicker result. Got squash blossoms going. Um, if I could get enough at one time, they don't keep very well. I do some stuff, squash blossoms. I'm probably going to do that for you guys next week when I get back from Granddaddy's Gun Club first meetup. Cucumber back here. You can see I've got all the wires. It's just stainless steel wire. And it runs down and attaches either to the plant itself or wherever I can. I prefer to attach it just right to the tubs. And uh, that's a squash plant there as well. And we got a male blossom there. So when you have surplus male blossoms, again, one of the cool things you can do with them, you just take some shrimp and some garlic and basically make a shrimp garlic paste out of it. Just mash your shrimp up like with the back of your knife, like just beat the hell out of it and blend it in with some garlic and a little bit of pepper and some lemongrass. Then take it and stuff this and pull it shut and then give it a dredge in some egg and dredge it in a little bit of um, uh, cornstarch actually, just a little bit and give it a quick uh, fry. Deep fry is the way it's traditionally done, but I found it much, much better with just a little bit of oil in the bottom pan like a pan fry, just crisp the outside up. That's pretty damn good and it's making use of something you'd otherwise not get going. Uh, our Scarlet Emperor beans are starting to do pretty well. They were kind of lackluster. I think there's more shade in here. Like I said, the, the amount of shade I have in here might be a bit much. It was more for the birds and the plants when it was originally ordered. So uh, we'll see how things do this year. And if, it, if I think it needs less shade, I'll replace this 60% uh, shade with like 40% shade. But I have a feeling as we move more and more into our uh, summer months, if you look, it doesn't look like these plants are hurting. I'm going to have to start draining those freaking tomatoes sideways. And uh, cucumber coming on. More tomatoes coming on. Eggplant looking good. She had a good flower on her, but I don't think it's going to set anything. It was only one at a time, so we'll have to wait till some of the other eggplants start putting flowers on, I think. Same thing, another one of these big squash. Look at that thing going. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to get it there. I'm going to train it all the way along that back thing. And when it gets to that wing wall, I'm going to bring it out and I'm going to bring it all the way down to the ground. And if, if it still needs to go after that, we'll just start trimming it off. And I'm sure somewhere in there we'll get a fruit set. Uh, that's actually a winter squash variety. So we'll have big old winter squashes hanging. People wonder, well, how are they going to support them? The vine actually has no problem supporting. So wherever they set a fruit, I'll just make a couple hangers and, and, and hang them up right there uh, with like some plumbing strap or something like that. So it disperses the weight versus this stuff where it'll be on the vine like that. Uh, again, the beans are starting to put flowers on. Uh, again, I, the one thing that doesn't look that great, there's a, sorry, where is it? There it is, there's a little squash, female squash uh, blossom starting to form right there. These are uh, sweet potato slips that I've started to put in. And uh, I wanna talk about that in a second, how I'm making them. This is some daikon. It's probably gonna get yanked out soon. It'll be small daikon. I'm gonna do some pickled daikon out of just this little group of them here. That'll open this space up. Um, more beans, more squash. I'm gonna have to get up there today and train that one. It's starting to go the way I don't want it to go again. Um, and I'm gonna be out of town for a couple of days and Dorothy's not gonna be looking after that stuff. But you see that one there is actually starting to cling on itself. And the problem is, you see right there, that leaf probably doesn't look too good. It starts smashing itself up against the roof. I got to stay on it and keep it trained. About every two or three days, I got to get up and redirect them. 
And when they start setting off tertiary and secondary vines, trim those off and just go with one main vine to make this work in here. Basil doing good. Cinnamon basil doing good. Watermelon. I know you think, oh my God, a giant watermelon. Hey, these are sugar babies. They're only about five pound watermelons. And uh, this one here needs a bit of training to get it back up to its wire. So I'll come out here today. And all I do, you can see right here is one I made in advance. I just cut a piece of wire and I make a loop and just run the plant through the loop like that. It works really, really well. Some of them are cooperative and they put a tendril out and do it and behave. Look at he, look at that. Hold on, there it is, right there. Look at that, little baby watermelon fixing a form there. That's awesome. Uh, this is red Malabar spinach. This is a, a great crop. I used to grow this a lot uh, in uh, Arlington, in my garden in Arlington. Uh, David Siegler found some of these at a plant shop, picked them up. I kind of forgotten about that plant. And things in a little wicking, uh, ebb and flow beds are starting to look pretty good. Um, I really didn't have enough fish in the system. Uh, so I've been spraying heavily with uh, Garrett juice. Some of the plants really haven't been able to catch up, but some of the stuff's starting to look pretty good right now, like that basil right there. And those peppers are starting to catch up. Um, so, you know, we'll see. Uh, how this does over here, but we have uh, up the Piscato population. Those are uh, white Nile tilapia in the system there. And uh, we got, it's hard to see them in here because of that, that bed's dumping and the pump. But there's a bunch of, we call them free bluegills in here. They probably started out about 200 of them, and there's probably about 100 left because uh, we trap them in it. They get messed up and dinged up a little bit and you lose some, but I think you've seen the video I've done before with fertilizer spikes. Uh, why are we out of focus? There we go. All right, so I wanted to take you down here and show you some of the things we're doing for plant propagation. All right, so here's a sweet potato slip. You can see it's rooting really, really nice. And in fact, that one's, that one's ready to go. Let me get her back in there. That one's ready to go get planted. Um, we're doing some tomato clones as well. I don't really have room for a lot more tomatoes, but we get blight around here. And my view is you just keep making clones. There's a little basil clone we're making right there. Um, watercress is just everywhere. This, is, this has become one of my favorite things on the planet. And almost none of it actually ends up in a salad or in my house. What ends up happening is I just come out here and graze on it so we're making our clones here sometimes i'll take a sweet potato clone like this and uh put it up in ebb and flow bed for a while because one of the problems i have is there's a bunch of white tilapia and goldfish in here they're eating the freaking roots off the off the clones um so what i need to do is go to uh i'm going to show you later i got some expanded shale and some beds and i'm gonna have to pull a bunch of it out because it's just it's just not draining right and i need to have a much smaller cap of it but uh, I could fill these little net pots with that expanded shell and do my cloning in the expanded shell in these floating beds. And this whole thing's going to change. I'm going to make this bed the model for the way things go in here. I'm going to turn this bed into one like that. I'm going to bring the level of this bed up. So they're basically two more fish tanks. And I'm going to move the, I'm going to redesign the rafts so that they actually fit half and they form fit like they should have been in the first place. And then... That'll give half open for the fish and a lot of cover area. And with the net pots filled up with the expanded shell, the really fine expanded shell, you can grow anything in there, uh, direct from seed if you want to even. And the fish, they can trim the roots off that come out of that, those pots. So I'm gonna use it mainly for cloning plants or uh, starting plants. Come on guys, it's all right if you eat the roots, it's fine. It doesn't really hurt my feelings. But I wanted to show you real quick before we end today that you can actually do a lot of plant propagation with these aquatic systems and uh, a way of make, thinking about things where your systems pay for themselves. We'll walk past my little nursery here. Um, again, this is the area I'm going to be doing the expansion in this year. I'm not really going to use this garden space at all this year. It's all going to get ripped out. Um, but the wife keep want, keeps wanting to go in here and weed eat it with her dadgone weed eater. And it's because she sees it in the evening. And this is chicory, and it's a, there's a bee on it right now. This is what you call a day flower. Tonight, this evening, if I come back out here, you won't see any of these blue, pretty blue flowers. They'll be gone. So she's not seeing the flowers. You can see the buds 
and this will be stay in bloom for a long time and it's going to drop seed as these bees are doing a great job of pollinating it and this is a great source of nectar and a great source of uh, pollen for my bees and you can see we got all those yellow flowers over there that look like dandelions but they're not dandelion they're like some kind of pseudo dandelion mocking me um but they they work those really hard too so i've had to just like leave this like a little wild area for the bees stay away from it with your dad gone weed eater i'm gonna have to get her out here in the morning and make my case she'll probably understand a lot better when she sees how pretty this is during the morning hours so let's come on over here pickerel rush is starting to flower that's one of my favorite aquatic plants. Uh, taro, this is a blue taro is what this is called. My understanding, it's a fairly rare plant in America. Um, I got two of them. We'll be uh, making more of those. But speaking of making plants, these are cuttings off of my goji berries. And uh, you can easily sell a, a well-started goji berry plant for 10 bucks. So all I did was go over there, a big clump right there, goji, and cut a bunch of softwood cuttings and stick them in here. I mean, that is literally all I did. Let's pull one out. Not quite as rooted as I'd like to see before I put into a pot, but actually that's rooted enough. Let's check this guy here out. So you can see they're rooting nicely, so I'll have to get those back in when I have two hands to work with. And as an experiment, I popped some passion flower in here. This is Blue Crown Passion Flower, Hardy Passion Flower. I should be able to sell these in a pot for at least 10, 15 bucks. And let's see, aha! They've taken a lot longer, but uh, I'll probably get that potted up today. That's good enough to grow. And we'll set it back in my nursery and I have that really shaded area. When you're starting plants out like this, you know, they want sun to grow, but the, the, to get settled in and put roots on, you want them well shaded. And that will, that dog will hunt. So, just in these, I put 12 of these in here and uh, just throw some soil in a pot, stick that in there, and grow that out for two or three months. And then just our retail farm customers, I'll make these offered for sale, tell the story of what a goji berry is, and I'll sell all 10 of them for 10 bucks a piece. That's $120. And uh, that's not like running a nursery or nothing, really. That's just side hustle. 120 bucks. Well, it costs about 40 bucks in materials to build one of these ebb and flow beds. So this bed just paid for itself, you know, three times over. And that's one way to think about this. Now, here's what I was talking about. This is the expanded shell. And this stuff's really lovely to work with. But you can see back here, this is just not good. And what it is, I, I capped this. This does have lava rock under it. But I capped it way too, too deep. Um, I probably need about two inches of this. So I'm going to have to bite the bullet and, and pull these beds out and completely uh, de-rock them and then fill them you know much higher maybe two more bags of lava rock and then cap them with this this shale uh, this expanded shell is great stuff you actually want larger size uh, expanded shell in an aquaponic system it's just not available around here we get this dirt cheap uh, when you compare it to other media so I'll, i'm going to make the modifications i'll probably just do one of them and see if it works and if it works i'll do the other two if it doesn't work well, we'll use this in other situations, and we'll go back to all lava rock. Uh, how's that for a booming bed? Uh, these plants really are star for nutrient. You can see this basil back here. It is unhappy. But if you look at watercress, it just doesn't need as much nutrient. Mint doesn't need as much nutrient. Remember, this is not an aquaponic system. These are here more for uh, filtration than anything else. But my, uh, my regrowth on my romaine lettuce, lettuce doesn't seem to care. That's a very odd-looking celery heart from celery I made stew with recently that I stuck in there and it's growing nicely. We got one lone pepper on this poor unhappy pepper plant. Green onions coming up. That's just the end tips of green onions. We got a uh, water chestnut doing real good here. Saldinia is the water plant that's in here acting as a filter. And you can see I have a wall built here so it doesn't get turned over. This tank here now has a ton of salvinia in it. And I've got a little bucket there that the dump goes into so it doesn't stir them up. And there's three really big tilapia in here. I got them out of my tank in my office. Um, they weren't breeding for me, so I figured if they weren't breeding, they could come out here and not breed. There's one down in there. You can see how clear this water is. I mean, people ask me when I built this, how will you ever filter it, you know? 
because um, there's no filter in the system except these here and the plants. Well, when you have healthy aquatic systems, water takes care of itself. I don't know if you can see down in there, but that water is crystal clear. I can see the bottom. I can see fish swimming by. Anyway, lots of cool stuff going on, guys. I wanted to catch up with you on this. There again, you just, I mean, I can't tell looking at the phone because there's sun behind me, but I know I can see fish on the phone, but I can see the bottom of the tank. That's a Zola. That's the plant there. Right there in those pots are... Uh, dwarf um, cattail. So we're cultivating those, more water chestnut, soft rush, pickerel rush, some very large leaf variety of mint that I found somewhere at some time. Same thing, doing the bucket overflow. We'll catch up with you guys later. Hope you enjoyed the tour today. And uh, remember, if uh, you want members-only videos, you can support us on, or patron-only videos, I should say, support us on Patreon. At five bucks a month, you get uh, at least one one-hour video a month called Walks with Jack. We talk about a lot of business principles in those. And there'll be some other videos coming up uh, for patron members at the $5 level of things that are, eh, we'll call them a little gray that I don't want to put out publicly. Uh, you can see the link for Patreon coming up about right there. Other videos right there. Check out the website. Subscribe to the channel. Catch you guys later.